here. Uh, first, I want to remind you children that this is the 20th session of camp since Dr. Stu and I began in 1982. Yeah! And, and we want you to know that we will always be here for you. As long as there are children with cancer who need a camp, we're going to be here for you. Yeah! who have been here for you for quite a few years. They've given financial support. They've written letters to many of you and exchanged photographs. And the gentleman here in the sweatshirt did a videotape for you. <laughs> and I want you to know that they care about your good health and your well-being as much as your nurses and doctors do. And they want you to live your lives to the fullest as much as their counselors, your counselors do. And they love you as much as your moms and dads do. And now we're going to sing them a welcome song. So, Laura? <laughs> and Dr. Stu, and this is our nurse Barbara Britt. This is just for you. We're so glad that you came here today. Now we can tell you from not so far away that your letters and cheer for the past few years have meant the world to us. unbelievable pride and quite a bit of amazement I present <laughs> to the children of Camp Ronald McDonald for good times the President of the United States and the First Lady President Ronald Reagan well I want you to know that Nancy and I are very proud and happy to be here. Incidentally, we're neighbors because yeah. Yeah. Uh, <laughs> just a few miles over the hills there, a little ways. Why we have a ranch that's very dear to us. But hearing what Pepper had to say about love, yes, there is so much love here, and we're very proud and happy to be a part of it. And maybe you'd like to know that. Things like this, people like Pepper and these others here who have made this a reality in this camp out of love. This is pretty, has been pretty unique and pretty peculiar to the United States. Other countries, this doesn't happen. The government does things in the other countries or, or they don't get done. But I thought you'd be happy to know that this year we have been doing a little talking to some of our friendly neighbors in the rest of the world. And as a result of that, there has been a meeting held in Paris, France, of representatives from those countries. All those countries are 
neighbors and trading partners in those other countries, for them to find out from us how we get things like this done by the people themselves doing it instead of waiting for a government program. And so I think we're going to see things like this happening to help people all over the world. You know, though, I can't resist this. I know I only have a few minutes because <laughs> all of us have schedules and things what to do. You want? <laughs> no, but I just thought instead of me, instead of me going on here and uh, and talking, it just I could only do this for maybe two or three. But sometimes you must have said to yourself, if I had a chance, I'd like to ask him if. Well, uh, why don't you ask me if, and we'd have a dialogue instead of a monologue. Oh boy. Uh, <laughs> what? Who's got, got a question a... for the president? Look Ooh. at their tongue tied. <laughs> what? These kids have not stopped talking. What? <laughs> what? Who's you, there? Michael. Michael? <laughs> <laughs> on the on the ordeal of what? <laughs> well, let me tell you. He was just uh, he was just back and came to the ranch Thursday and we had a, a nice visit here. He's back. It was a very strenuous trip over there. They seem to like to hold meetings. <laughs> he'd be in be in meetings like eight hours, but I think there is great reason for hope. For the first time, I don't think anyone's very much. This hasn't been said enough. That for the it's the first time there has ever been a Russian leader, who has actually suggested eliminating doing away with some of the weapons. There have been meetings before, but it was always to decide, well, how fast a rate should we agree to build more weapons? And uh, this time, they are su actually suggesting, as we have been, let's do away with some of those weapons. Yay. I think we <laughs> And the, the He's come home very optimistic, and we're all looking forward to carrying this through to where we can make some start in eliminating these terrible ballistic missiles. And my ultimate goal is, once we start that, ultimately to get rid of nuclear missiles all over the world. Yes. <laughs> well, uh, <laughs> we need counselors. I um, <laughs> first I'm going to come back to the ranch and do some riding, <laughs> but I think there are some things to to be done. You know, someone once said, "Life begins when you begin to serve." Well, I think by virtue of holding this job, maybe there's still some useful things that I can do. Uh, one thing uh, I have thought about the uh, possibility of writing a book uh, uh, so that you can get the true story of what's been going on. <laughs> and, uh, uh, but I think there'll be some things of that kind and uh, still continuing to, to help uh, in worthy and good causes. Nancy, can I tell them on you? What? Nancy said, just say no, in answer to a question from a little girl in school who asked, what do you do when someone offers drugs? And she said, just say no. Today, there are over 12,000 just say no clubs among young people across the United States. Oh, yes. Well, I was pleased to, and I appreciate your writing. Thank you. I think, 
I think I'm getting the signal that I've been here <laughs> too long. If there was just one more, then I would quit. Yes. How do you stay so healthy? <laughs> well, well, Nancy takes good care of me. She tucks me in at night <laughs> and uh, tells me to put something warm on if I start to go outdoors without it and so forth. But no, to tell you the truth, and incidentally, this is just for all of you and I know how much this means. Uh, I was always in athletics. I went to summer camps. I like that very much. And we have a little exercise room there in the White House that we've set up. And every day when I come up in the office, well, I, I go into the Nautilus machine and start to work on some of the weights and so forth there. And it does very well. Uh, Dutch? Well, with an Irish father and a mother that was English and Scotch, uh, I, I, if I hadn't heard the real story myself, I, I wouldn't know how I came to be called Dutch Reagan. But um, my father would come home, and I guess I was rather a chubby, chubby baby, and he would, he would refer to me as the Dutchman. And how was the Dutchman? And having an older brother, the rest of the kids in the neighborhood, it stuck. And I grew up with the name of Dutch Reagan. Thank you so well, much. All right. Thank you. We've got two more songs, and uh, the, the children will escort you over there. We've got two more quick songs. By the way, I cannot reveal the contents, but we got another envelope from the president to help support our camp. <laughs> Pretty wonderful. Uh, Stu? This is our program director, Stu Grossman. Come on, Stu. One of the prerequisites of being program director is you're not allowed to use microphones. You have to have a very loud voice. So, <laughs> we have a couple of songs. And one of them is called Shake a Friend's Hand. Are you all not ready on three? One, two, three. Shake a friend's hand, shake a friend's hand.
the summit prospects? <laughs> right Let me just say that I feel very good, but I also am a little superstitious. I don't want to talk about things until they happen. <laughs> <laughs>